Welcome to the entire history of Gorilla Tag. In this series, we go through every little detail and document how the game is progressing. Be sure to watch part one first to learn how Gorilla Tag started and how it developed over the years. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you'd like to see part three. By the way, in case you were wondering, my name is Artark and I run a YouTube channel as well, but it's for TFT players. If you wanna check it out, link is in the description below. Starting where we left off, on August 31st, 2022, one of the Davids posted a special announcement introducing the new changes made to the in-game appeals and intervention process. There is now a team of reviewers who will be applying the bans on a very regular cadence. This is also the day that Electronic Wall became Gorilla Tag's community manager. September 8th is when Team Battle Beta came out, which added a few new things to the game modes, such as Team Mode 1v1 or 5v5. Slingshots now show your health as you play, and there are new visual effects on paintballs that allow it to match your team color. On September 20th, David Y announced that they are still trying to grow the team and hire people, especially a new community manager, which has a few responsibilities. September 22nd is when the Paint Brawl update officially came out, giving us a brand new game mode to play and also the ability to practice by shooting targets. It also brought us paint brawl themed cosmetics as well as new ways to hold and store them. The smaller items dock to your forearms and the larger items dock to your shoulders. October 21st, the Halloween update came out and it was the biggest update yet. Every map had decorations like bubbling cauldrons, jack-o'-lanterns, giant cobwebs, skeletons, and more. They also released new Halloween sets and items as well as a new type of cosmetic, the balloons. The brand new feature lets you grab the balloon off your back and set it free. Everybody loved the update and you could tell how much effort was put into it. We obviously can't forget Lucy the Ghost. The developers know how loved the creepy pastas are in the community, so they made up their own version for Halloween. There were two types of ghosts, a blue one as well as a red one. There were five graves, one in every map where Lucy could spawn. It is said that the blue one, which people name Lucy, really? It is said that the blue one, which people, <laughs> it's just such a cheesy name, spawned at random times. And if you tapped around one of the graves, you summon the red Lucy, which was significantly faster than the blue one. Once spawned, the ghost would target one monkey and chase them around, getting faster every couple of seconds. When caught, Lucy would lift you up into the sky and then despawn. October 28th is when we got the first ever flashback sale. This one obviously brought back all of the old Halloween cosmetics, which meant all the old players could no longer prove they've been playing the game for over a year. November 11th, we get a fall update, which removed all of the Halloween stuff and instead brought us fall cosmetics. Some of them you could eat, which was a new feature. They also also added a couple of new decorations to the forest such as hay bales, cornfields, and a hay base, but the canyons changed the most. November 23rd, the Thanksgiving flashback sale came out releasing all of the Thanksgiving cosmetics from last year, including the turkey leg. This was a very controversial update and a lot of players got upset with the developers for bringing back old cosmetics, some even threatening to quit the game altogether. It got so bad that Lemming himself had to make a statement saying, quote, Hey everyone, I wanted to write up some of my thoughts around bring back the old items. I know people have been looking up various statements I've made over the past almost two years now, and I figure this would be a good time to address things. The long and short of it is that our position that we want to continue bringing back items hasn't changed. The underlying reasoning is that we want this to be a fun, welcoming environment where we can bring people in and show them this cool game we all love. I am very against doing something that would cause new players to feel alienated or like they've missed out on something and won't have a chance to experience things along with everyone else. I know for my part I never liked it when I would play a game and I didn't have the same opportunity as everyone else to earn or unlock everything just because I came to it later. Even if it is not true it can feel like the community is insular and that they're lording their special objects over everyone else. We think that the cosmetic should be a tool for expression and play, and we want to make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity to get them. That said, we also hear very clearly that a lot of people want items to remain special because they love the game so much and want to show how much time and effort they've spent supporting the game. I think that most people who feel uncomfortable with the way some of the items are coming back are not thinking that for selfish reasons, but because they do want to celebrate the fact that they've been here for a long time and have 
been really dedicated to the game. I hope you can believe me when I say we hear these thoughts and do feel that it's special that so many people have been so into the game for as long as they have been. This has caused us to start throwing around a lot of ideas for how we might recognize our longtime supporters. The only items released so far that we are not planning on bringing back the Early Access Supporter Pack, the Gorilla Tag 1 badge, and the 2022 New Year's glasses. November 30th, Electronic Wall says Gorilla Tag is coming out of Early Access on the 15th of December. Without support of a great community, this could not have happened. We hope you will join us for this amazing milestone for the game. The Early Access Pack will not be available after launch day. These items will never return to the store rotation, so if you want to grab it, now is the best time to do so. This meant that the Early Access Badge, the Chrome Cowboy Hat, and the Sunny Sun Hat became limited edition items since you can get the other hats in the city. On December 6, Cody O'Quinn became a community moderator. The title was officially changed from community manager to community moderator. December 9th, we got massive news that Gorilla Tag would no longer be free to play. Another Axiom made a statement saying, hey everyone, we have some news today about the Steam version of Gorilla Tag. We appreciate all of the support we have gotten on this platform and always wanted to keep the Steam version free, but we have to face the reality that we spend a pretty insane amount of time fighting hacking and malicious behavior from PC accounts. And there are still pretty widespread issues with hackers ruining games for people. Any time we spend on trying to stop people from ruining the game is time we can't spend on making the game better. So this ends up hurting everyone. Sadly, because we want and need to focus on the future of the game, we've made the difficult decision to charge for the Steam version as an extra deterrent for players evading bans. Anyone who currently has the game will continue to own it, and you will not be required to purchase the game. If you already own it, you own it. However, for new accounts, the Steam version of Gorilla Tag will no longer be free to play, and the game will have a purchase price effective immediately. The game will cost $20, and anyone buying the game will get the equivalent value of Shiny Rocks, a total of $5,500 upon the first login, which includes $5,000 for the purchase and $500 for being a new user. Think of it as basically requiring new Steam users to buy that Shiny Rock bundle. And this became a massive problem for the hackers because if they get banned, they have to keep paying $20 every time. The game was still free on the Quest platform, so anyone with a Quest headset can still play it for free. December 15th was a huge day for the community. Gorilla Tag launched out of early access. Cody wrote, quote, Since introduced to App Lab and Steam in 2021, Gorilla Tag has attracted a dedicated community of over 5 million unique users playing, exploring, and socializing in its immersive VR world. We don't need to tell you that, though. You have been here all along in this journey, all playing a part in this momentous movement for the game. End quote. This update brought us a completely new bundle, new launch day cosmetics, a rocket in the city map, and also a new map known as the clouds map. Unfortunately, there was an issue with purchasing the bundle on Steam and it was never fixed. December 22nd, the holiday update came out and brought us snow, snowballs, Christmas cosmetics, and this trippy Christmas maze. For some reason, there were so many bugs with this update, the most annoying one being the snowballs that caused the game to crash. January 13th, 2023, the developers added the holiday overstock sale update to the game, which brought back old Christmas cosmetics from last year, as well as one brand new cosmetic, which was a massive candy cane. There was one cosmetic that didn't return this year, the 2022 glasses, making them the oldest cosmetic in the game that you can't get anymore. January 27th brings us the winter update with new winter themed cosmetic items, snow forts with weird symbols and a maze being added to the game. One thing a lot of people missed was this big X on the wall behind one of the shops in the city. February 6th, Gorilla Tag on the Meta Rift store was updated to match pricing on Steam VR. Just like with Steam, everyone who had 
as the game on the Meta Rift Store will continue to own it. They had made it paid because hackers were finding new ways to hack for free. On February 10th, we got the Valentine's Day sale, which brought back old items from last year, but also added a few new ones. We also got a new Sweetheart bundle, replacing the Launch Day bundle, a giant birthday cake in the city, as well as Gorilla Tag birthday items, the birthday cupcake, and the GT2 badge, since it's Gorilla Tag's second birthday in two days. The Sweetheart bundle was broken on Steam, and now the team was trying to fix both of the bundles to make them available for Steam users. February 24th, the Winter Cosmetics were replaced with more Winter Cosmetics. For some reason, the developers added even more Winter-themed items to the game, and now the red X on the wall had torches hanging beside it. Also, the secret tunnel in the forest started cracking. On March 10th, we got a Winter Flashback update which brought all Winter and St. Patrick's Day cosmetics from last year. It also added this huge fan to the mountain map, and some parts of the map were completely revamped. This update also brought us the single controller mode. This game now automatically recognizes when only one controller is connected. The hand associated with the disconnected controller will lock to your torso, allowing you to move around and jump with the connected controller. We also got a pot of gold bundle, which replaced the Valentine's Day one. And once again, Steam users were unable to buy it. This update also removed all snow. The red X on the wall now has a wooden door on it, but nobody was able to go inside yet. And now there's also a huge ice cube in the caves. On March 24th, the basement update came out. A lot of cool new Lord of the Rings inspired cosmetics were added to the shop, as well as a new little area in the city map. When you go through the door, you can go downstairs and you'll find a Dungeons and Dragons themed maze. The beholders are known as the Monk Eyes. Monk Eyes, instead of monkeys. Get it? When you get caught, you drop down to the jail where you are able to buy a special cosmetic, but if you can make it to the end, you can grab a free reward for completing the maze. On March 31st, Gorilla Tag announced the brand new Creator Troop program. All content creator monkeys could apply to become a finger painter content creator. This new program promised that content creators could get special badges, chats with developers, and more. They're going to choose 10 people every month so people who didn't get in can just apply again next month. On April 1st, you could either become a tiny monkey or a huge monkey just by changing your name in the computer. April 7th brought us cherry blossom leaves and also the early spring flashback sale, which meant all spring cosmetics from last year came back to the store. But unfortunately, we did not get any new cosmetics this year. Also on April 7th, an email was sent from Gorilla Tag congratulating Shivy on his acceptance into the Gorilla Tag Creator Troop program, officially making him one of the 10 that got accepted that month. Yay, Shivy! And then a few days later, the rest of the people in the program were publicly announced. April 21st, we got the spring cleaning update, and a lot of cosmetics were added to the shop, replacing the basement cosmetics. This update also added mouse holes in the basement. On April 27th, Gorilla Tag posted the second form so people can apply for the Creator Troop. On the 5th of May, the Canyons received a Wild West makeover with matching cosmetics. Further, an enticing Household Objects flashback sale was introduced, and on this very day, the long-awaited edition of zip lining and rope swinging was finally implemented. Who would have guessed that a game centered around monkeys would require three years to incorporate such a fundamental feature? Either way, this update was loved by the communities, and it was worth the wait. And that's where we are today. If you're enjoying this series and want to see a part three, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below. If you want to grab yourself some cool merch, then check out the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Yeah.